Hello everyone, the Masters of the Fox here, and today I will be reviewing this right here, United Cutley Bla Black Ronin uh, Tsunami. Yep. So, this is a pretty interesting knife, but we're going to talk about this. Uh, if, you know, if it's a high, if it's good quality from that company United Cutlery and if you should be buying something like this or if you know just giving you my general thoughts but first let's do some specs let's go check out its length length all right right there at the point um, to the back its overall length is 11 and a half inches it goes all the way to this uh, lanyard hole, which kind of doubles as kind of like a, I mean, like an impact tool, very pointy. And then its blade length goes around to, I think, a little bit under four and a half. Yeah. Did I, did I say overall length was 11 and a half? No, it's 11 and a quarter. Sorry about that. I hope I got that right. And then its cutting edge is just a little bit, little over three and a half. So you get, a, you, it is a little, very little cutting edge compared to blade length and handle length. So some people may not like that ratio, but you know, whatever. And now let's weigh it. I gotta remember to start taking the cap off of my scale. All right. Do, 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 do. Hold you up so you don't cut me. Put you right there. Boom. Hello, you two. All right. Boom. Wow, that is 9.50 ounces. That's almost 10 ounces. That would have been kind of cool. Okay, wow, yeah. So it's. It doesn't feel very heavy, but yeah, it does have a little bit of weight. You are going to feel this in your pocket. Off. All right, do a size comparison up against the pair of three. Tenacious. Every video I say I need to clean that and I never clean that. I gotta clean that. There we are, so obviously longer than both, much longer than the pair of three and quite longer than the Tenacious. The, yeah, but you do get much, much more cutting edge with this guy compared to this one. Yeah, this one's blade is basically the same as this one's cutting edge, but this one, it's just all cutting edge, where this one, you have this huge gap right here, but we'll be talking about that and then the utility of it in a moment. And more comparisons, because I like my comparisons. You know I do. CJRB. Belt bar. And it's a little guy. A small one. And obviously, much longer than both of them. Jeez, man, this is a big boy knife. Okay. Put it up, James. Benchmade Freak. We banter. Obviously lo longer than the banter. And quite longer than the Freak, which this is actually a pretty long knife. I think this is like a 4-inch blade. This might have been maybe 3.75. I'll need to measure that one of these days. So, yeah. And last but not least, the perfect... EDC Cold Steel Spotter XL and it's the little brother the medium spotter so much much quite a bit longer than the medium of spotter but obviously the spotter wins I like to know if there's a knife longer than that folding knife fixed weights don't count Folding knife longer than the spotter. I wonder if there's any out there. Let me know if you know if there's a folding knife that's longer than seven and a half inches. <laughs> All right, there we go. Size comparisons done.
go with height. As you can see, boop, 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 boop. height, go to three. And where did I leave? My, there's my tenacious. Right here, tenacious. Okay, so yeah, it's it's definitely a high knife. This is going to be very. You can see that right there. This thing is going to be. It's even taller than the para three. So, yeah, right over there. It's going to be a little bit cumbersome to eat up a lot of pocket. It's going to take a lot of pocket to put this in, and. Right here, let's go with there with much thicker than the pair of three. Quite a bit, actually. You can almost stack almost two pair of th threes on this. Almost. And it's blade thickness. Well, you know. Yeah, right there. If it would focus, I'm not sure if why it won't focus. Why won't you focus? Come on. Yeah, good enough. So, pretty thick. And behind the edge. Yeah, it gets pretty, th it's, it's pretty thick behind the edge. Doesn't get really that thin, and you got this entire flat right here that definitely is thick, and you got this uh, swedge grind up there, the false edge right there that tapers down, makes it kind of a, it almost looks like it wanted to be a spare point and then drop to a drop point. So, yeah, pretty interesting. And so, if you're wondering, how much is this worth? 35 bucks on their website at uh, United cutlery 35 bucks for this so and i never done business with united cutlery this was actually a gift from my father who knows i like interesting knife shapes so he got me this and he got it from a tool guy that sells knives for him um so i've never done business with united cutlery so i can't tell you if they're a good retailer or not but I can tell you the quality of this knife um, and that, uh, what was it, 50 caliber bullet knife I did a review on not too long ago. So you can also watch that uh, if you want to know a little bit more about United Cutlery. But I don't know that much about them. So, you know, I'm definitely going to be buying more stuff. Uh, I'm going to buy something from them to see how, the, uh, how they conduct their business, if they're good to work with. So then I can give you guys more information on where to buy interesting knives and for, you know, make sure you're getting quality. I de that's one of the things I really strive for is to make sure my viewers get quality products, things that they want, things that they like. I The last thing I, I want to do is, is give you false information or tell you guys to go buy something, you buy it and you hate it. I don't, that's my biggest fear is making somebody buy something that they don't like and then they end up not liking me because of my suggestion. I, I'm gonna try my best to give you the best information I could possibly get so then you guys can get what you truly want. So that's that's my goal. That's what I really want. That's what I want to do. And I love knives and I love talking about them. So that's what I plan. Okay, and ooh, cut test. Almost forgot about my cut test. Let's find some paper. I know I have some paper around here to cut. Uh, I don't really have, I think this will be fine. Cut. Let's do this one. Yeah. Cut test on this guy. As you can see, it it will cut. It's pretty sharp. But only at certain. Yeah, so not too bad. Eh. Sometimes it cuts, sometimes it just kind of tears. 
yeah, it, it, it cuts and then you just get kind of, but I mean, it will work. You need some like a box open and you need to whip out something bulk, boom, cut open that box. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about this knife, shall we? This knife is from, you know, like I said, United Cutlery and this knife uses three CR 13 steel. 3CR13 steel. What is 3CR13 steel? Well, it's a Chinese manufactured steel. It's a, it, I think, I'm not sure if budget's the right word, but it's a cheap steel. It, it, it'll, it'll do what it's supposed to do, but you know, it's not for, it's not for high-end knives. You're only going to find the steel on lower-end knives and cheaper knives. Just, you know, basic pocket knives that aren't and aren't going to be anything super special just uh, you know stuff like that uh it can get to a, a decent hardness uh scale it gets all the way to um uh hold on what was it again? yes uh 54 and some uh, it varies from manufacturer so sometimes it goes from 52 and 55 but most the majority of the time you get 54 uh hrc with this um steel and uh, i've also read that it's similar it's very it's similar to uh 420 j2 so if anyone's familiar with 420 j2 then you know what you're kind of getting with this one there's also other variants uh there is one cr13 and then there's two cr13 but three cr13 is uh stronger and harder than uh those two so yeah if you need something a little bit more strong or you know, harder. Uh, this one is known to be easy to machine and easy to sharpen. It has good corrosion resistance, uh, but the edge retention is okay. It's not going to be anything special. So, I mean, kind of like if you need a knife that you just need to cut and then sharpen in a pinch, this is a good steal for that. Uh, if you're, um, I'm not an expert on this at all. I've never made a knife. I'm not a knife maker. Maybe one day. Um, but if you are a knife maker or someone that's interested in making knives, this might be a good steel to uh, start off with because I hear that it's it's good to it's easy to machine and it's very cheap. You can it's a low price, so I, I hear that uh, you know I read that this is actually pretty popular with a lot of knife makers because it's it's cheap and easy to machine. Uh, you can get a quick edge on it too, so it might be a good starter steel for if someone's like kind of like. Uh, I want to make a knife, but I don't know what steel to use. Uh, start off with this one. Or, you know, see if you like it. Use it as a test steel, just like a throwaway steel, just to kind of get a, a feeling for. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's what I'm just thinking. I mean, I'm, I'll probably do that. If I were to make a knife, I'll just start off with something relatively cheap like this guy. Uh, you know, this steel, uh, which is 3CR. Um, it does have yeah pretty high, uh, high toughness. I think I've already said that. I'm repeating myself here. And uh, let's talk a little bit about its fit and finish. I think I covered everything about the steel that I can remember. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I'll probably come back to something if it pops in my head. Uh, but the fit and finish, eh, yeah, the fit and finish. Uh, it's it's okay. Uh, the fit and finish right here, as you can see, some of this rubber inlay is not pressed down all the way. So it's coming off right there over time. This thing may just, this entire rubber inlay may come off if it's not fused to the plastic. Uh, so yeah, a little fin finish issue right there. Uh, it's it's relatively centered actually. Not, not too bad, not too bad. So, and then right here on the back spacer, I'm not sure if you can see that, if it will come through on the camera and with my lighting, this right here, the cutout is a little bit slighted this way. It's not really that big of an issue. It's not going to cause you any problems. It's just, you know, as an enthusiast, you're just like, oh, 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 the cutout wrong. Make something like that, you know? I'm not sure if you can see it through the camera, but I, I can notice it's a little bit cut out at an angle, which is just kind of funny. But otherwise, not, not too bad. I mean, the grinds are... Seem relatively good. Doesn't it keeps consistency? It's not like one side is 
all over the place, and the swedge grinding is actually pretty consistent on both angles. This side rides up a little bit to here, and this side rides up a little bit lower. So the edge grinding is not too bad. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, the blade shape, does it serve any functional purpose? Not that I can see, you might get hung up on this little uh, divot right here. It's not really that bad, and it actually rounded the insides of it. So it doesn't snag anything, which is actually really cool. All these holes might collect some gunk. All you need to do is just take a Q-tip, run it through, clean it up nice and good. Uh, right up here, nice jimping, so you can get a good grip on it right there. And then you have this ridiculous <laughs> Ford Choil right here to get extra control on your blade that you can actually fit two fingers, if you so wish. Really get control on this blade, which is awesome. So and you got plenty of room. You can go here, you can go right here, choke all the way up to here, choke all the way up with two fingers. Let's see if we can get three fingers. No, two finger, two finger choil right there. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. The it, it is spring assisted. I'm not sure if you noticed that this is a spring assisted blade. Uh, if you spring assist it this way, it's going to plant out and then flop around, and then you got to do this. So it's best to uh, spring assist it from the side. Or you sorry, deploy it from the side or deploy it upwards. Um, because even with that spring assist, it can't carry the momentum. So it has a weak torsion bar, unfortunately. So yeah. Uh you just gotta deploy it like this. Uh it does have an only tip down carry pocket clip. And the pocket clip is nothing special, just a basic pocket clip. It carries right around there. So you're not really going to have that much of the knife sticking out. That's pretty cool. Uh, but some people are not going to like that because a lot of you know a lot of people like to most majority of people like to carry it uh, tip up uh, for obvious reasons. It's pretty good carrying tip up. Um, I I've never really had a problem carrying tip down, but I do like tip up. Um, so some people and it's not reversible, so it's right handed only. Uh, you got your thumb stud and you got your back flipper. Or, you know your flipper tab and you can push it out let's see if I can get it reverse yep you can get it reverse which is pretty cool and yeah so 35 bucks it's uh I, th I think it's pretty pretty good steel and so yeah I don't think there's really much more to talk about See, and you got this right here. Uh, lanyard hole. You can kind of use that as an impact, you know, impact tool. But it is uh, just, it's not steel, it's plastic. So this, if you use this as an impact tool, this will probably get very deformed, if not break, because it's just plastic and it does feel like kind of cheapish plastic. Not too bad, actually. And then some rubber insert inserts for grip, which uh, luckily these inserts on the rubber are uh, not sticky. I feel a lot of rubber, and some rubber gets sticky for no reason. Uh, this actually feels pretty good. Uh, and I forgot to show you on the inside. It is backed up by steel liners, which is nice. And uh, But the liners are not milled out. You have no skeletonization, nothing, no cutouts. So that's where all that weight comes from. You're getting a full weight of the of the steel liners, which is interesting. And then the stop pin right there comes up, racks it right there. I'll lock up right there. Locks up pretty good. Yep, you got no play. So, uh, in my opinion, this is really just for my aesthetic um, liking. I love the uh, the shape of this; it's really cool. I uh, thirty five bucks. I, I would say j this is just my opinion for thirty five bucks. Pay just pay an extra twenty, get a Civivi in like D two. Or with the, what was the other steel that they used? Was it nine CR thirteen MOV or nine C? Well, nine CR something I think it was. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I would do that just in my opinion if you really want high quality. But if you if you just like the aesthetic of this so much, then yeah, I say go for it. This thing is very fun because it's just such an interesting blade shape. Just, just that's just my opinion. If if you want a, a little bit better steel, um, or probably a lot better steel, because D two is really good. So if you want better steel, uh, just better fit and finish all the way around, better handle feeling, uh, and just spend the extra twenty bucks, extra thirty bucks. Hell, even spending an extra thirty five on this. Yeah, it was an extra 35 topped onto this one's 35. So that would be like 70 bucks. You can get a really good Civivi. You'll be very happy with the Civivi. So that's my opinion. Um, but otherwise, if you like the aesthetic of this guy, I say go for it. It's just fun. Sometimes it's just fun to go for things like this. Well, I think this video went on long enough. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and if you like more knife related content go check out my other videos and remember to subscribe because i post every friday saturday and sunday and there'll be more knives and more videos in the future thank you again for watching and have a fantastic day bye